Hello everyone, thank you so much for watching this awesome video. My name is Tristan Rupp and I have the pleasure of interviewing today the Shan Stratton. Thank you so much, Shan, for being here and for doing this. Hey, it's my pleasure. Glad to do it. Uh, you know, there's, anytime I get an opportunity to share important information that changes people's lives, I'm happy to do it. So thank Me you. Too. Awesome. So I want you to start by saying who you are, what you do, and who you work with. I've been in the health and wellness industry for about 25 years now, and it's something that is a true passion of mine, improving the quality of life for people. Yeah. And it's a great industry to be able to do that. And over that 25 year period of time, I've had the great fortune, the great pleasure of working with some of the greatest athletes and athletic organizations, such as the New York Yankees and the Boston Red Sox and the LA Dodgers, the Miami Heat, uh, right here in Arizona with the uh, uh, Arizona Cardinals. And I've just been very fortunate to be able to work with some of, you know, just really great, great athletes and great teams but it's not because of me, it's because of the message that we're delivering, as you'll hear here tonight, is a message that really improves performance of an individual. Not just an athlete, but we all want to improve our performances. So that's, that's yeah. really what I do, and I have loved yeah. doing it. Right, results-based, right? So you get Has the results, be. and then other teams yeah. call you, other players call you, and then, and yeah. lots of experience. Cool. Yeah. Okay, so are there any disclaimers that we should say? Yeah, um... You know, as, as I said, I've worked with hundreds, if not thousands, of professional athletes, a lot of professional organizations, 26 of the 30 Major League Baseball teams, but I'm always very, very careful to make sure that people understand. Those teams do not endorse me, nor do they endorse the companies that I work with or that I own. They're simply organizations that I work with and consult with to help improve their quality of performance with their athletes. But uh, yeah, as far as endorsement or them endorsing me or anything else, uh, that's just not the case. So right. we always want to make sure that's clear. And we also are not making any medical claims. Nothing cures anything. You always yeah. seek your doctor. Am I missing anything For sure. Else? No. Everything that you hear that tries to increase health, you got to take your own opinion of it and then make sure that you understand that nothing is so common that it applies to everybody across the board. Yeah, it's educational purposes only. Correct. Okay, perfect. Okay, so can you please tell us about pre Congan Water sh Shan and how you were introduced to it? <laughs> yeah. Uh, being in the health and wellness industry, I uh, worked in and, and for a nutrition company. So everything that I focused on with my professional athletes and general public for the first 15 years was really about how can I reduce that acid buildup because I'd known for a long time that acidity was bad in general. Right. That as our acidity increases, our risk for sickness, illness, and disease also increases. Yeah. So that was always a focus of mine, but the really the only way that I had to be able to address that with individuals was through the foods that we're eating, the supplements that we're taking, and to try and get someone to, to eat a, an alkaline diet, it's why, nearly impossible. And why alkaline? Alkaline because our body is intended to be slightly alkaline. Mm -hmm. But due to the waters that we drink, the foods that we eat, the emotional, physical, and, and that kind of stress that we put our bodies through, environmental factors, we're bombarded with acidity and acidic conditions every day. So with that being the case... I knew that if I could do things from a, from a nutritional perspective, how do we reduce that acidity, get our bodies back into what we call homeostasis through alkaline diet or foods. Yeah. But to do that, it's almost always going to be raw vegetables in most cases. Those are the alkalizing foods. Yeah. <laughs> There's something nobody wants to eat. <laughs> not very often, not consistently. Yep. So I, I did, back, back to your question, the, the pre congan water was I myself and the, my, my clients, I was always trying to get, eat that alkaline diet. Yeah. Just, you just couldn't do it. Right. So I was always trying to do the best I could. So when congan water was introduced to me, they made a statement when they were talking to me about the water. And that statement was, well, what if you could change something that you're doing every day anyway, but it would help you reduce acid buildup? That was the aha moment for me. Mm. And I was very skeptical. Wow. I was like, so you're telling me you have something that's going to help reduce my acidity? Yes, that's what they said. Super skeptical. I said, okay, what is this miraculous thing? And they said, water. What was the last thing I wanted to hear? 
I mean, because at the time, I thought, <laughs> like you probably thought, and many of you listening, water is water. We've water all heard is that. Water. water is just water. We've heard that so many times. Couldn't have been further from the truth. Yeah. So the pre-Congan water Shan and the Congan water introduction all of a sudden came together, and I realized if I can change what they're already doing, which is the water they're drinking. They all got to drink it anyway. They're all going to drink water. Yeah. And the 80% of your body that is made up of water, if we can take it from acidic filtered water, tap water, some people still drink tap water, mm -hmm. reverse osmosis water, distilled water, all the bottled waters, yeah. all those common drinks such as sodas and, and so on. Even all well water. Well water is Even acidic. Well water, yeah. Now that doesn't mean they're not filtered and clean. They can be the cleanest, purest form of water out there, but if they're still acidic, it causes our body to, to continue to rise in acidity slightly, and that yeah. has proven to, to that, that increases those risks of those acid-based diseases, yeah. mainly cancer and diabetes. Yeah. So yeah. that was my mindset before Kongan water was introduced to me. Yeah. Nutrient utilization over nutrient consumption is a huge part of your message and the whole philosophy behind Core Health Products. Can you talk about that a little bit? That really is our, our tagline. Yeah. For years, 25 plus years, we always hear people talking about, oh, you got to eat less protein or more protein or less fat or more fat or you got to go on a carb diet or cut the carbs out of your diet. The reality is <laughs> it doesn't matter what diet you're consuming if you're not utilizing those nutrients, it's not going to matter anyway. Because unutilized healthy food is still fattening. Utilization okay. is the key. So our tagline is nutrient utilization is more important than nutrient consumption. Yep. And so that in and of itself is what we try and teach is how do we increase the utilization of the foods we're consuming. A huge part of that, of increasing the utilization of these nutrients, is balancing that pH. Okay. And so if your pH is more acidic in an environment that is supposed to be more alkaline or vice versa, the, util the nutrients can't be utilized properly. Yeah. So the common water has been a huge factor in building my tagline as a company, how do we increase that nutrient utilization? Balance the pH. Having said that, people don't realize that the most anti-acidic or antacid, mm. the greatest antacid is or are enzymes. Enzymes are an anti-acid. Enzymes digest and break our foods down so acid production is not relied on so much. Mm. When we eat a food that has no enzymes, the body sees that and says, I've got to secrete a large amount of acid to try and melt that food to get it on through this system. Mm. So okay. enzymes are a vital, vital, vital part to balancing that body's So would pH. that help with acid reflux? Absolutely. Because that is what acid reflux, acid reflux and indigestion, same thing, right? Okay. Okay. What is indigestion? The inability to digest. Yeah. With that being the case, we have to ask ourselves, okay, then what is required for digestion? Mm -hmm. Enzymes are the number one requirement for all digestion. But yet, whenever you cook any food, I don't care how healthy it is, if you cook it, you kill every enzyme in that food. Yeah. So the food comes in, sits in the stomach, the stomach says, oh, no enzymes to digest it, so I'm going to secrete a bunch of what? Acid. Acid. Yeah. So yes, Enzymes are vital in acid reduction, acid reflux, heartburn, indigestion, um, really? all of those types yeah. of things. Yeah. And so then what you noticed with the water, right? So you got introduced to Kangen water and you went, water having the, this, this nutrient utilization just from the, the minerals in the water over just drinking water, right? Like you, you felt like, wow, what a great almost partnership. Like it's, yeah. it's so similar yep. into what our message is already. The beautiful thing of Kangen water. That, it, was, it was truly a heaven sent to me. Um, knowing that after all these years of working hard, trying to help athletes and individuals alike get from acidic to more alkaline, to have something come along that was like, 
the easiest thing in the world. It's not like you have to get them to take a new pill. It's not like you have to get them to do a new exercise. It's not like you have to get them to eat a new plate of this or don't eat this. Yeah. It is seriously as simple as saying, instead of this water that you're going to drink anyway, just drink this water. It's tastes, that simple. Tastes better anyway. Tastes better anyway. It tastes so much better anyway. But it's, I mean, it yeah. was a huge heaven sent to, yeah. to me, my philosophy, my company, yeah. my beliefs. It's like a breakthrough. It, it really was. Yeah, yeah, that's awesome. What happened when you first introduced Kangen water to your athletes? I would say the first thing I noticed was the athlete saying, I feel like I can stay on the field a little bit longer. Okay. Now, at first, to be completely honest, I didn't understand it well enough to know, well, why would that be the case? So I really started spending a lot of time. Why would alkaline water help an athlete stay on the field longer? Well, when you start breaking it down, and I'm going to make it very simple, as acid goes up, the body says, not good. So to bring this acid back down, one of the first things that is robbed is actual oxygen. Mm -hmm. Oxygen is robbed to help neutralize this acid buildup. As oxygen is robbed, we have less oxygen to stay on the field longer. Right. Now again, whether that is a professional athlete on their field, or whether that's you and I on our field of a profession, or as a mom, or as a friend, or as a churchgoer, or as whatever it is, we are all athletes on our own field of play. Yeah, I love that you say that. I, I often yeah. say that yeah. because... The desire that that professional athlete has to increase his or her performance is no less important than the desire that you and I and you listeners have to increase your performance. You are no less important than the professional athletes. Exactly right, 100%. Yeah. So if you want to increase your performance by having the ability to perform longer, whatever that is, whether it's work, whether that's play, whether that's spending time with your kids, whether that's making those two or three extra calls in the afternoon to build your Kong and water business, whatever it is, 100%, yep. oxygen is required. And anything you're doing that reduces that oxygen is going to reduce your ability to perform at yeah. whatever level yeah. for a longer period of time. Yeah. So that was the first thing that I started noticing with my athletes, yeah. and that's what helped me realize that same exact thing applies to all of us that live every day trying to get better at what we yeah. do. And let's have them keep drinking the water and see what else, what other results start happening. Oh, right? there's, and, there's been so many, but that's, that was really where it started. Yeah, that's awesome. You could um, tell a little bit about the blood lactate testing that you did with athletes and then the lactic slash uric acid results. Yep. I love this story. It's, uh, it, it a, we say it's a study. It's a very informal study. It's not published or anything like that. It's not peer-reviewed. It was simply Dr. Horst Filzer, uh, our, our uh, medical advisor for Enagic. Yeah. Uh, he came down to Arizona. We have a facility out in Phoenix where we have a lot of NFL, a lot of NBA, and uh, players like that, Fisher Sport Physical Therapy. And so during this period of time, I asked Dr. Filzer if he had come down because we had a bunch of NFL players coming in. Uh, to do the, the preseason workouts. And we grill them. We work them through those preseason workouts so hard. So he came down, and what we wanted to do was we hear so much about electrolytes. And for you to understand why electrolytes are important to an athlete is because electrolytes, those minerals, are the primary minerals to help reduce acid. So it was our philosophy, it was our thought that if an athlete starts working out and lactic acid goes up, which is natural, then those electrolyte minerals, calcium, sodium, potassium, magnesium, are robbed from the body to help neutralize that acid. Ah, light bulb. So we said, let's take some blood, measure the lactate levels of each of these athletes, then let's run them through, so we have a baseline, then let's run them through all the workouts on, on every 15 or 30 minutes or whatever it was, I think it was, actually I think it was every 30 minutes, we'd draw throughout the whole entire workout. So 30 minutes later, we'd take the next sample, 30 minutes later, we'd take the next sample, then we'd run them all the way through the workout. So obviously, we know that lactate levels really skyrocketed. That's what happens with every athlete, but it also happens with everybody that spends any time doing any physical activity. Me, you, Mary on the couch, you know, physical, emotional stress, lactate levels go up. Lactate goes up, an injury oxygen goes or down. An accident. Injury. Yeah. Any injury, any accident. Yeah, okay. 
the the one that has always amazed me though mm -hmm. that that I don't think people realize is emotional stress is one of the one of the primary causes of lactate production, lactic acid production. And I think many of you listening to mm -hmm. this, you and I, everybody has a lot of emotional stress, whether that's over family or friends or work or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. So in that setting, we did all those those blood tests, and we had six of the NFL players drinking water, uh, bottled water, any other bottled water choice. Okay, well, yep. I'm not going to use any names, but any of the bottled waters. Got it. We had six of them drinking Kangen water only, and we had six of them drinking those sports electrolyte replacement drinks. Are you okay? allowed to say any of those? I'm not. So I'm going to leave it at that one for this. But you all know the ones that are that are used out there. You know the the electrolyte replacement drink. All the athletes drink it. They're in the colored bottles. No, we get so many athletes who think that they 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 can't drink just water. They have to drink a sports drink to yep. replace those electrolytes. Yep. And and the philosophy. I'll give them credit. The philosophy was right. Okay. If lactic acid goes up, it robs those electrolyte minerals. And so let's give electrolyte drink. Well, the problem was that an electrolyte drink is horrible tasting. So to make the electrolyte replenishment drink palatable for kids and adults and everybody else, what yeah. did they add in there to it? Sugar. Sugars. And sugars happen to be one of the most acidic nutrients, if you can call it nutrients, substrates, uh, that there is on the face of the earth. Mm -hmm. So regardless of how many electrolyte minerals you have in there, if you're also adding back in there, um, you know, uh, uh, colorings and things like that, but then sugar that lactate level continues to rise even with the electrolyte minerals trying to reduce it, but then the sugar. Reduce it and sugar. Reduce it and sugar. So the result wasn't very good, and that was our philosophy. And sure enough, as we did this testing through the facility, we found that those that were on the sports drinks, their lactate levels just continued to rise throughout the entire workout. And at the end, then it slowed and dropped back down into a normal range in a certain period of time. Long story short, the group that was drinking the Congan water, yeah. their lactate levels didn't get nearly as high, but the most important part was it dropped back down to a normal range in almost half the period of time. Yeah. So if you think of it in, I can, re I can increase my ability to perform by 50%, that's a big increase in performance. And I'm not talking energy, I'm talking in whatever your energy level is, being able to keep that energy level longer periods of time. And recover faster. And recover faster. That's why I've noticed yeah. too personally when I'm working out on Kangen water, yeah. I'm like, if I did leg day, the next day I could do leg day again, and the next yeah. day I could do leg day again. And you know, if you work out and you do leg day, you don't do leg day the next day. Leg you're days stiff, are not good. You're like getting out of bed like an old grandma. But I, I started drinking Kangen water and I was like, I'm, yeah. I'm not sore. Yeah. And that's that speaks to the lactic acid yeah. being flushed out, which is super cool. Well, at the at the facility, there's there's a funny thing going on among all the athletes as they say, Shan, we can't lift ourselves sore anymore. Meaning that even when they come in after the off season, they can't lift so hard and so much that they get very sore at all because we keep those lactate levels down. That's great. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Okay. So the next thing I like to talk about, you mentioned in that one training that you did about the, about acidity and your organs mm. and fat surrounding yeah. those organs. Can you talk about that? And sure. Acidity? Um, Often when people start drinking Kangen water, as you've experienced and, and I and, and many others in, in this industry, people start drinking Kangen water or alkalizing water and their measurements, their body, their body uh, type, their body look, their body proportion, within the first week, two weeks, three weeks, it might not change at all. But yet we see the scale dropping down a lot of times, not always. But a lot of times we see the scale going down, we're saying, well, wait a minute, I'm not losing body fat out here. My, everything's the same, measurements are the same. How am I dropping fat? One of the things that we've realized and, and learned is that the organs within the body, specifically your heart, your lungs, your, you know, all those important organs inside, yeah. they're extremely pH specific, pH sensitive. Yeah. And as that pH or alkaline versus acidity, as soon as that starts getting out of range, either way, the organs say, hey, acidity is not good, so I've got to protect these. They're called vital organs for a reason. Mm -hmm. I've got to protect these organs, and the most protective, insulating nutrient, if you will, is fat. So many of our organs, when we see acidity rise, 
many of the organs start getting protected from that acidity with fat. As soon as we start addressing that, bringing that acidity back down into a balanced state, we know that a lot of that protective fat on the inside is able to be released and flushed out of the body. And that's where a lot of that weight loss is coming from, mm -hmm. is the internal fats causing restriction to a lot of those organs. Yeah. So, yeah. It's awesome. Can you talk a little bit too about the, the flushing out of uh, toxins from the cells that's happening too with the, with the water? Yeah. Um, detoxification, often people think, Oh, I need to do a detox. Well, the reality is detox is an ongoing 24 hour a day process. Okay. Now you can speed up that process with detox programs, but mm -hmm. when it, be, when it comes to our red blood cells and the actual life energies of our body, that is a process that's going on every day. And to do that, we have these red blood cells and on the inside of these red blood cells are nutrients and things like that. But there are also things like toxins. Yeah. Those toxins have need to get flushed out. With that red blood cell, if we have larger molecules of water, water is what flushes through there, yeah. the larger the molecule, the less of that water that's able to penetrate through and move through, flush through. Okay. With our ionization process and the electrolysis process, we break many of those water molecules down into smaller groups. Okay. It's often referred to as micro clustering. I hate using that word because it's, it's not a, it's, it's not, not a scientific a, word. It's not, yeah. it's yeah. not, it's just a description of taking large clusters of, of water molecules, breaking down into smaller. Yeah. What size to what size? I don't know. I don't think it really matters. All I know is it's bigger. Now it's smaller. Right. The smaller it is, the more we're able to push through those red blood cells in doing so. Putting nutrients in. Flushing toxins out. Flushing toxins out. Yeah. yeah. So the micro clustering process. Yeah. I feel like I lost eight pounds of toxins and acidic waste just in my first two weeks drinking pumpkin <laughs> water. It's, it's incredible. It okay. is. Can you talk about the difference between alkaline waters and ours and what, ours and what Kongan water is? Because a lot of times yeah. I get people who are like, alkaline water is not good for you. And it's like, well, let me explain. <laughs> yeah. that I, I can sum that up very quickly. Everybody, since, since Enagic started really bringing alkaline, alkalizing, but alkaline water into the industry, everybody's jumping on their coattails, meaning that we are now seeing alkaline water on the shelves at Walmart. We're seeing alkaline water being sold in stores. We're seeing alkaline water being sold as, as different marketing tactics and different, you know, I mean, they're jumping on their coattails. Now, I don't blame anybody. That, that's a great thing about America. You know, you can do that. But you as a listener need to understand there is, a, there is a gigantic difference between alkaline water, which is what they're doing, and alkalizing water, which are two completely different things. Alkaline water is a noun. It's a thing. Alkalizing water, it's an actual action, right? Yeah. I mean, it's a, it's a yeah. verb. It is doing something. Alkalizing means that we're actively changing the pH of the body as opposed to alkaline water is just, oh, we can take pond water, we can take toilet water, we can take reverse osmosis, we can take any water you want to take. It can be very acidic. We can add some calcium, a little bit of magnesium, maybe a little bit of a few of the other minerals, and instantly what do we have? Alkaline water. Mm -hmm. That is not going to change the pH of the tissue sites in the body. Now, I'm not saying it's unhealthy, I'm simply saying that that is, is nothing more than a mineral rich water. We change it by using electricity with those minerals, meaning we run that water through those seven, plate, seven plates of titanium and platinum, yep. that electricity that runs through there, mm -hmm. we use those minerals to do it, and we create an electrical process mm -hmm. that actively changes the pH of the body inside. So don't get hung up or tricked into someone saying, oh, I drink alkaline water. Right. Well, good for you, but you should be drinking alkalizing water. Yeah. Those are two completely yeah. different no things. No side effects, no harm to the body and what we have. This is the way water was intended to be. Right. Water that comes down from the high mountains, well, it's alkaline. Why? Because... 
and, and so you would say, well, there's no electricity up there. They're not plugging their stream into... Right, right, right. Well, that's why most of the time in the mountains, what do you have? Rainstorms accompanied with lightning. Okay. Lightning okay. creates that energy, that electricity, mm -hmm. that ionizes these waters. And that's why your high mountain streams have a much higher ORP, more of an alkalinity. It's much healthier, but it's that electrical process created by nature's extension cord, if you will, which is lightning. <laughs> Neat. So. I love that. Talk about ORP and how anything negative is providing a defense against the things that are killing us. When we talk about... What the heck is ORP? <laughs> that's the point I'm going to make. ORP! <laughs> Nobody knows what ORP... I mean, no, I shouldn't say that. I would bet, as you're listening to this, you're going to be asking yourself, if you haven't heard a, from me speaking or you or someone in the Enagic world, you're saying, what is ORP? I hate using that word. Right. It's a technical term. ORP is an acronym for Oxidation Reduction Potent Potential. Right. I say we need to turn that around. We don't talk about ORP. We need to talk about PRO. PRO meaning we have the greatest potential to reduce oxidation. Oxidation is what goes on when we have a lack of electrons or free radicals. Anytime we breathe in pollution, consume pesticides, electromagnetic fields from cell phones, microwaves, TVs. Bio band. You got your bioband right there. Okay, <laughs> But those electromagnetic fields they create free radicals. Free radicals have a missing electron mm -hmm. and cause damage to the body. Yeah. ORP is a measurement of what the potential to reduce that oxidative process is. Sure. When there's a lack of, of electron, it robs electrons from the good parts good of the body, yeah. the good cells, and damages those, damage those cells. Yeah. So what is the potential to reduce that? That's what ORP is measuring. If it is on the positive side, that means that it is positively oxidizing the body. It's bad. So this is the one case where a positive number is bad. Exactly. It's kind of like golf. Okay, there In you golf, go. you want the smaller number there and you, you want to be in the negatives. Yeah, okay? yeah, I've yeah, never yeah. experienced that personally, but... <laughs> Me either. You gotta have fun though. That's a great way to that's a great way to, to say it though. It is. It, you you want that negative number, and the amazing thing is, you take something like say orange juice. Uh, it is a great antioxidant. We've all heard about that. We've you probably consumed orange juice because you knew it was an antioxidant. Mm -hmm. The reality is, it is a negative, but it's only a negative sixty. But you have no point of reference until you understand that our our water. Our Kangen water yeah. that has the ionization electrolysis process, it's not a negative 60 like vitamin C, it's a negative 600. There is a gigantic difference in its potential to reduce that, oxi that oxidation. oxidation in the body, yeah. And many doctors are talking nowadays, especially about the oxidative stress being one of the silent killers in America and around the world. Oxidation is detrimental to our health. It's a natural process. It's going to happen. Yeah. But if we can slow it down, that's yeah. what we want to do. So we want to give the body the best potential to reduce that oxidation. And that's yeah. what our water does. To defend us against all the things that are killing us every day, pretty and, much. And getting worse. <laughs> Pollution's going to get worse. Electromagnetic fields are going to get worse. Mm -hmm. We're exposed to uh, chemicals more and more every day. Emotional stress, physical yes. stress gets worse and worse and worse and worse. Yeah. All those things yeah. cause oxidation. Yep. Yep. Love it. Okay. Last thing I want to talk about. Can we just, can we just tell everyone that how, how this is not a silver bullet? Okay. It's not a cure, but it's just the greatest potential for defense and wellness. It's like a, it's like a giant, it's a really giant piece to the great puzzle of health. Right? But I just yeah. don't want people to think that, like, this is it. Like, this is all they have to do. It's an important factor. And, and I know you've seen a lot of my lectures and a lot of my presentations and stuff. And I talk about when we're talking about holistic health, meaning addressing every aspect of health, there's no one thing. You can't just eat perfectly, but then go sit on the couch and never do anything and expect to be healthy. Right. Okay? You can't go to the gym every single day, but yet go eat cheeseburgers and crap all day and expect to be healthy. You can't breathe in bad, horrible air all day, but then go and do something else. It's, it's, there are many pieces to this puzzle. Yeah. The important thing to realize, though, is that there's one stake in the, middle, in, in the ground. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. that everything else, all those other pieces revolve around that one steak. Mm -hmm. That one steak is the largest component of our body, which is water. water. That one steak determines how effective the good food you eat is going to be. Yeah. It determines how effective that yoga class that you're going to is going to be. It determines how effective that cycling class you're doing or that you know prayer that you whatever it is if you don't have the largest component of your body in a way that nature had intended it and nature's water is supposed to be slightly alkaline with high energy from electricity meaning a high ORP that's what we provide but without all the other pieces, and that's why I still teach nutrition, nutrition, nutrition on top of that. Right. There are other pieces to it. But if you can handle that stake in the ground first and foremost, all those other pieces will start to slowly fit into place. And you'll notice an improvement. And that's, that's what I've had the great pleasure of experiencing over the past 10 years is people being able to find that health and energy and vitality and metabolism and all those things that they've been looking for. Preach. So. <laughs> Preach, son. Yes. Yes. I, can't, I couldn't agree more. And I wanted to add, too, you can't just drink your coffee with it or you can't just have a few sips. Like, if people really want to take this seriously, you have to take it seriously and drink, ideally, your body weight in ounces of the water. Yep. And then the second thing that I wanted to say, too, was... If you already take supplements, if you already take pre-workouts, if you already take um, minerals or whatever, if you already take stuff, um, Thrive or other products out whatever there, it whatever yeah. it is that you already take, you you need to understand how kangen water, like it goes hand in hand. If you drink kangen water with all the other things that you're doing to be healthy, it's going to maximize it. That's it. In a way you you would never believe. <laughs> Which goes back you know? to nutrient utilization, more important than nutrient consumption. Yeah. Whatever you're consuming, let the Kangen water increase the absorption of those nutrients. Regardless of what the brand or company or product or nutrient is. You know? Because there's so many supplement companies out there. Yeah. And it's like Kangen water goes with all of them. Yeah. And that's what's so interesting because there's a lot of different companies like ours out there. But I feel like ours is the one that all of them need to work with. <laughs> For sure. You know, because yep. we would maximize everything too. Nice. And if you're not taking anything, if you're not doing anything for your health right now, what the water can do is to help combat what you're not doing for yourself already. So whether it's going to be helping, whether it's going to increase the good stuff you're doing or help to decrease some of the bad stuff that you're doing. It's just a, it's just a must. It, it is. If, if you look at, you know, if you get a little bit geeky, for me, I love it. the body's made up 75 average, 75, 80% water. Yeah. The earth is made up 75, 80% water. Okay. Mm -hmm. There's a very close correlation there. Um, and so that to me tells us that if my body's made up 80% of something, I better take a serious look at what that 80% is yeah. that I'm putting in there. Yeah. More so than anything else. And people ask me all the time, well, Shan, how can you say that? You own a, a supplement company. Don't you want people focusing on their supplements? For business? Yeah, of course. But if I'm being completely honest about the health side of it, more important than supplements or anything else is that largest component of the body, which is water. It was intended to be alkaline. It was intended to be rich in antioxidizing capabilities, and mm -hmm. that's exactly what we create with the Kangen water alkalizing machine. That's it. Yeah. It's, that is the, the it's best so cool. way to go. You just take the, the best water in the world in those few places in the world where they are, put it inside of a box, and there you go. Home. And there you go. Awesome. Thank you so much, Shan. I really appreciate it. My pleasure. Awesome. Thank you. Thanks, guys.